On the battlefields of World War II, warmth was more valuable than ammunition. Soldiers who survived the night often owed it not to superior weapons or tactics, but to their ability to keep body heat from escaping into the merciless cold. During the early years of the war, military logistics were focused on fuel, food and ammunition. Warmth was an afterthought. But when troops began freezing in foxholes from the Ardennes to the Eastern Front, armies were forced to rethink how to trap human heat efficiently with limited supplies. That desperate search for survival led to one of the most effective and overlooked pieces of field innovation a blanket substitute that could trap body heat for hours, even without an actual blanket. This wasn't a woolen issue blanket or some secret chemical heater. It was a simple, brilliant adaptation of material science and soldier ingenuity. Known by several field nicknames, heat sheet, foil wrap or insulating cloth, this invention became a life-saving tool when standard wool was unavailable or soaked. Today it stands as the prototype of what modern survivalists know as the thermal blanket or emergency space sheet. But its roots go much deeper, back to World War II's most brutal winters. The problem was that wool blankets failed when soaked or frozen. Every major army in World War II issued wool blankets. They were durable, insulating and fairly lightweight for their time. But wool had one critical weakness. It absorbed moisture. In rain, snow or freezing conditions, a soaked wool blanket could turn into a heavy icy slab that drained warmth instead of conserving it. Soldiers dug into muddy trenches or frozen fields had to contend not just with the cold, but with constant dampness. Reports from the Eastern Front describe men freezing to death while fully clothed and covered, simply because their layers couldn't dry. The Allies faced similar issues during the Battle of the Bulge, when icy fog and wet snow rendered traditional bedding useless. The need for a heat-retaining, water-resistant alternative became urgent. That's when military engineers and field medics began experimenting with substitutes that didn't rely on fabric fibers for insulation, but instead worked on reflective heat retention, a principle that was almost unknown in field gear at the time. In 1943, British and American research teams studying pilot survival kits developed what became the first known reflective insulation fabric, a thin cellulose or paper sheet coated with vaporized aluminum. This metallic coating reflected back radiant body heat while blocking wind and moisture. The material was derived from early radar insulation films and aircraft packaging components. It was cheap, lightweight, and honestly, astonishingly effective. Field trials showed that when wrapped around a person or used as a liner under clothing, it could retain up to 80% of body heat, a revolutionary figure for such a thin sheet. Unlike wool, it didn't absorb water. It also folded flat and could be reused multiple times before the coating wore off. By the late years of the Second World War, the United States Army Air Forces, well, they started issuing these experimental heat-reflective sheets in survival kits for pilots who might end up stranded in the Arctic or the North Atlantic. Meanwhile, over in the Soviet Union, their forces came up with a similar idea on their own, a version made from bitumen-coated paper lined with thin foil. They'd tuck these inside their greatcoats or wear them beneath their uniforms during those brutally cold winter campaigns. 
Now, even though the general public didn't really hear much about it at the time, these clever innovations actually laid the groundwork for the emergency blankets that, you know, space programs would go on to make famous in the 1960s. The real genius behind this Second World War blanket substitute wasn't just in the material itself. It was in the way soldiers actually put it to use. See, these reflective sheets worked best when they were paired with natural insulation layers, creating a sort of heat trap, almost like a thermal cocoon. Field manuals, they'd recommend wrapping the reflective sheet as close to the body as possible, then layering any available cloth, paper, or even straw on top of that to help capture and hold in the warm air. In extreme cold, soldiers often lined the inside of their coats or sleeping bags with pieces of the material, secured using buttons or tape. Others built quick shelters using branches or canvas, lining the inside walls with the reflective surface to bounce heat inward. Even a small fire placed in front of such a shelter could increase internal temperatures dramatically. Medics quickly realized its medical potential as well. Casualties suffering from hypothermia were wrapped in reflective sheets during evacuation to prevent further heat loss, a practice that continues today in modern emergency medicine. The results were remarkable. Troops reported staying significantly warmer for longer periods, even without fires or extra blankets. In a war where frostbite was as deadly as gunfire, that difference saved countless lives. So, the reflective material worked by redirecting infrared radiation. The same invisible heat your body constantly emits, you know. Instead of letting it just disperse into the air, the metallic coating would send that heat back toward the source effectively recycling warmth. It didn't actually create heat, it simply prevented loss. This principle of radiant heat reflection is, well, still the foundation of modern thermal survival gear. Space blankets, bevy sacks and thermal tents all owe their efficiency to this World War II discovery. The technology has evolved, from metallized cellulose to mylar, which is a tough polyester film invented by DuPont in the 1950s, but the science, you see, remains the same. So, the effectiveness really depends on layering. A reflective sheet alone, well, it won't keep someone warm indefinitely. But when it's combined with any form of insulation, like clothing, natural fibres, or even just dry grass, it can trap heat long enough to sustain body temperature in freezing conditions. Soldiers, you know, they understood this almost instinctively and adapted it into a step-by-step -step method. First, keep an air layer. Don't wrap the material too tightly. You want to leave a small space for trapped air. Second, block moisture. Make sure it's on the inner layer, or at least covered from snow. And third, seal gaps. The better the enclosure, the longer it'll retain heat. These same steps, believe it or not, are still taught in military and survival training today. What's remarkable about this World War II development is how it changed the philosophy of warmth. Before this, insulation was all about bulk. More wool, more layers, more weight. This new material proved that reflection, not just insulation, could preserve body heat efficiently. That shift in thinking would influence everything from field rations to spacesuits in the decades to come. 
After the war, declassified research on reflective insulation went directly into civilian use. Humanitarian organizations began using metallic blankets for disaster relief, and mountaineers adopted them for emergency bivouacs. Yet few realize their origins trace back to cold, desperate nights in wartime foxholes and airfields. Even for modern survivalists, the World War II blanket substitute remains a valuable lesson. Lightweight reflective sheeting, now readily available as emergency blankets or aluminum foil-backed insulation, can still save lives when used properly. Whether lining a tent, insulating a sleeping bag, or wrapping it around your torso during exposure, the method that kept soldiers alive in 1944 still works in 2025. This forgotten wartime innovation is more than a historical curiosity. It's a timeless survival tool. The same principle that kept soldiers alive through the frozen hell of the Ardennes can keep a modern hiker or rescuer warm today. If you value real history and practical knowledge that still matters, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with fellow history buffs and survival enthusiasts. Each episode uncovers the ingenious, often overlooked technologies that helped ordinary people endure extraordinary hardship and still hold lessons worth learning. Stay curious, stay prepared, and keep history alive.